Hey folks, welcome back to the 45 Home Lab YouTube channel. I'm Zach Perry, and most of you probably know Proxmox. I talk about it plenty on this channel. Proxmox, 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 Proxmox. Don't say it. Don't you say it. Proxmox. Come on! It's my go-to for virtualization. Do you know that you can also manage your virtual machines right inside of Houston with just a lightweight add-on? Today, we're gonna to be putting cockpit virtual machines side by side with Proxmox to see where each one makes sense in your home lab. If you have one of our home lab systems running Rocky or Ubuntu, you'll already have Cockpit and Houston available right out of the box. If not, no problem. I'll link the guides in the description so you can install them yourself. Now, quick background. Houston, it's built on top of Cockpit, an open source web-based server management tool. And you can add it to most Linux distros, uh, Rocky, Debian, Ubuntu, and so on. Cockpit, it's kind of like a one-stop shop. So it manages your storage, your networking, logs, updates, metrics, containers, more and more and more. But even if you don't have one of our home labs, you can grab everything from either the Cockpit Projects GitHub or our own and run it on your own hardware. That said, there are some caveats. So Houston provides extra packages and tools for things like the hardware tab, ZFS management, and the task scheduler. And it's officially supported on Ubuntu 20 and 22 and Rocky 8 and 9. It'll run on other Debian or RHEL based distros, but your mileage may vary. And if you're running Houston on non-45 drives hardware, features like the motherboard and disk info tabs may not display correctly. Still, if you're comfortable with tinkering, uh, you can probably make it work. But with that out of the way, let's focus on what we're actually here for. The virtual machines module inside of Cockpit, how it stacks up against Proxmox, and a quick walkthrough of the setup. The biggest difference between these two, Proxmox, it's a dedicated virtualization platform. That's its entire purpose. Cockpit Machines, on the other hand, it's just a plugin inside of Cockpit. It's an add-on to the general purpose Linux server that might already be handling other jobs. Here's a side-by-side -side breakdown of Proxmox VE versus Cockpit Machines. I'll just highlight a few here, but we'll throw the full list on the screen. So Proxmox VE, it's a full virtualization platform, Debian-based OS. Cockpit Virtual Machines, it's web-based server manager with VM plugins. Proxmox VE and Cockpit Virtual Machines both use KVM plus QEMU. Container support is built into Proxmox, but with Cockpit, it's a separate Podman plugin. With Cockpit, you don't have clustering and HA built in as you would with Proxmox. And when it comes to networking, Proxmox has advanced things like bridges, bonds, VLANs, SDN features, but Cockpit has basic NAT bridges, Similar, simple configs like that. For storage, Proxmox has ZFS, Ceph, LVM, NV, NFS, iSCSI, etc. Cockpit, Cockpit, it has file, NFS, iSCSI, LVM, and a few other things. But with that said, it is a great plugin for testing, setting up VMs for lighter workloads, like maybe a small domain controller. Now, let's go in and actually see what it's like to build a VM in Cockpit machines. All right, so now let's see what it actually looks like when we want to build a virtual machine inside of Cockpit, and we also have our Houston UI. Now, when I was talking before about things like the motherboard tab, uh, your mileage may vary on those. I'll just actually show you what I mean here for anybody who's not familiar with um, our UI, with our modules, things like that. So you can see here, just booted this system up not too long ago. Uh, it's going through, checking over everything, and it is going to build a graphical view of the motherboard in your system, the RAM, everything like that. Same thing with the disks tab. So it's gonna gather that, it's going to tell us how many are here. And as you can see, this is modeled after how our actual servers look. Um, that might be in our home lab, might be wherever. But if you can change this around to work with your own hardware, that's where I'm talking about you can do your tinkering, everything like that. But Let's actually go in and take a look at the virtual machines tab. So if we go into here and that's a test one that I was doing there. So the first thing that we would want to do is actually build a, a pool. Now we do have a default one that's already there automatically, but we have a ZFS pool that we had built. It is four mirrors or well, two mirrors of four disks, all of them SSDs. And so with that, we also have a file system. So we're just gonna put it in tank slash images. And once we go back to our virtual machines here, 
And we can see we already have our VM tank already created, but let's say we want to do another one here. So, and we want to do, let's say just a pure ISO's um, uh, pool here. We can do file system directory, NFS, iSCSI. So we're going to keep it local. We're going to do file system directory here. And if we do slash tank slash ISO's, now no such file system or directory. See, it won't actually go there. So we need to create it. So let's go to here and create file system, parent tank ISO's and create a file system. And you can see instantaneous back to virtual machines and cancel that, create. And we're gonna call this ISO's file system. And then we'll start typing in our path here. So then we have ISO's and create. And it's currently inactive, so we'll activate that. Then we can actually go down here. We can see what it looks like. Will it auto start on reboot? Yes. Is it persistent? Yes. It's target path, it's type, directory, storage volumes. Now we can actually go and create a volume in here, call it raw QCOW2, but we'll keep things simple and we'll just go straight into ISOs here. So now that that's done, there also will be a network that is created automatically. It's just default. It's, uh, device will be VIRB0. Uh, it'll have NAT for its forwarding mode. Now, if we go to networking here, we can see that interface, this IP address. Now, with that said, it still will be able to get out on the internet and be able to pull down any packages, what have you. But let's go and actually create our VM now to see what that whole process looks like. So we can import a VM, which we're not gonna to do today, but we can take the disk image here, the operating system, give it its memory, but we're going to create a VM. So we'll call this, since we have Cache OS already on our system here, this is, or it's already fresh in our minds, I should say, we will just download that onto here. We will grab the URL, remote URL here. So you can see here, already have it, but We'll go here, choose an operating system. And this is an Arch-based system here. We'll create a new QCAL volume. You can also make some, so in the VM tank, if we want to make our ISO's directory in there, we can, we can do no, st no storage, but we'll leave that there. We can set a quota storage limit. We'll leave that at 50 gigs. And our memory 512 is a little low, so let's go to gigs and we'll say two. Not 20, so then we can do create and edit if we wanna make any other further changes to it. But in this case, we'll do create and run. And it's creating our VM, but then we can click on Cache OS and we can see here that it will give us our console right here. So now let's go into that, click there. It'll start loading and we can get a view of kind of what it looks like at a glance. So if you're familiar with Proxmox and you're looking at the summary tab of a VM, your, this is gonna look familiar. So your connection, your state, memory, CPU. We can see it's spiking down there. We did only get one virtual CPU. So this might be a little bit of a slower process over here, but we have our firmware, our emulated machine, and we can set up Watchdog and VSOX here. And even gives us a um, way to actually, you know, uh, some examples of how to do that. But Let's go down, look at our disks. So we can see our paths here. We can see the ports, uh, our CD-ROM disks. So it's currently using zero because there's nothing on it. Um, we have 50 gigs available. The bus that it's using, vert.io, it's access source. And same thing with our network interfaces. And let's see now. So that's going through the install. And when we scroll down here, let's take a look at the other features that we have. So we can do host devices. So if we wanna pass through anything uh, via either USB or PCI, we can do that here. Have not tested that myself, but definitely a nice feature to have. Uh, snapshots, so you can go in, very simple. Gives it a name, description, good to go. And then shared directory. So we actually don't have any that are shared between the host and this VM, but we can go just by Shared host directories need to be manually mounted inside of the VM. So it gives us the steps to do that here. So what I will say about the cockpit machines versus Proxmox, I am much more comfortable using Proxmox because I've been using it for quite a number of years now. Um, but if you don't need an entire virtualization platform, if you have you know cockpit, if you have any Linux distro, but you wanna do some 
virtualization. You don't want to have to go into the, uh, into the CLI. This is a fantastic option. Uh, now, it doesn't have the same features as Proxmox for virtualization, obviously. So I feel like this would be a great use case for if you don't need a complete virtualization platform, but you do need to have some VMs, you want to do some testing, you don't want to do um, um, WSL2 on Windows, let's say, or set up VirtualBox, but you do have this set up on Raspberry Pi, uh, Home Lab system, anything really. I mean, this is, this is a fantastic option. But once we go through here, I probably should have given this some more resources because uh, it, is, it is not happy at the moment. It's a little, little slow there. But a couple of things I did notice while we go through this. So let that do its thing here. We'll go back to virtual machines. And as you can see here, didn't have a bootable device. So one important thing, these are just some caveats as I was going through, uh, playing around with myself there. So. Um, always specify your actual pool there. So this, it is just using the default um, uh, default pool that's implicitly created. So if we were gonna add a disk here, if we wanted to add anything else, we would wanna use our, let's say VM tank or ISOs, set our info here. We can give it a custom path, create new, but we'll close that. Adding network interfaces. So we can bridge to the LAN, which is what we're gonna do here because we just want very simple access to the um, uh, to the network there, but virtual network, direct attached, um, source here, our model, VertIO, we can do E1000, uh, RTL 8139, one I'm actually not familiar with there. Um, let's see, MAC address, generate automatically, persistence, always attach. Um, let's see. But we'll get out of this one that has really no um, bootable device here. One thing I did notice though, is if I go to actually issue a shutdown from here, um, it just seems to spin and spin and spin. That just might be something um, on my part that I have misconfigured, I'm not sure there, but what I find that I would have to do is do a force shutdown or reboot works here, I'm not too sure. No, it doesn't look like it, but Let's take a look at our Cache OS VM that we have building here. So now that the install process is done, we can see we have Cache OS booting here. I did not give it a lot of resources here, which is why we have a lot of uh, uh, our memory usage and CPU usage that are absolutely pinned. Um, but with that said, that is just about how easy it is to set up a VM within Houston, within Cockpit. But all right, now we have Cache OS actually up and running. It's at the install process here. So we have a VM running in Houston cockpit within a matter of minutes there. Super easy to do. I mean, just as easy as Proxmox, I would say. The whole navigating is a little bit different there. Um, did take me a few tries. One thing I did notice, and again, might just be me there, but uh, if I would set up a virtual NIC, um, it would, I wasn't able to edit it if it failed for any reason on initial startup. Um, then I had to just delete it and start over again. But again, that could just be me. <laughs> so we got Cache OS set up on our virtual machine here, or our cockpit machines, and super easy to do. So let me know in the comments down below, what'd you think of this video? Anything you wanna kinda see in the future relating to this, anything home lab, any sort of tools you want me to take a look at. If you wanna see what we have on offer, head on over to store.45homelab.com. Our social medias are down in the description below. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.